Well, hi there, it's Greg coming here from Good News for Israel, and we're taking fire to settle on, bringing ourselves into alignment with the Lord just for a few minutes. Grab a coffee, grab your Bible. Let's do some study in the Word of God. It just brings more understanding about the Lord and the way that He works. It's a, a wonderful thing to do. So we've been looking at the sons of the prophets and that there were actually quite a large number of these in the area of Bethel and, and uh, Rama and, and Gilgal and Jericho and places like that. Uh, but we saw last time that they actually uh, lived in dormitories and had to build a bigger dormitory uh, just to, uh, to be able to fit into. It's sort of like a live-in Bible college. So <laughs> have you ever thought about, okay, there were so many of them. What was the food situation like? What did mealtime look like for our young trainee sons of the prophets or disciples? Well, the Bible says that the sons of the prophets actually ate together with the master prophet when he was with them. In 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 38, it says, And Elisha returned to Gilgal, and there was a famine in the land. Now the sons of the prophets were sitting before him, and he said to his servant, Put on the large pot and boil stew for the sons of the prophets. The interesting thing here is that there was a famine, and Elisha took the responsibility, uh, responsibility to prepare the food for his disciples because he was the master prophet. Now look towards the time of Jesus and his disciples and read there in John chapter 21 verse 5 what happened. Jesus called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you'll find some. And when they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it's the Lord. And as soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it's the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him for he'd taken it off and he jumped into the water the other disciples followed in the boat, the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you've just caught. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat, dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153, but even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. So there's a pattern here of discipleship. It's not always about teaching from the front of a classroom. Paul described it well in 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 15. For though you might have 10,000 instructors in Messiah, yet you do not have many fathers. For in Messiah Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. Therefore, I urge you, imitate me. Are you a pastor or a leader? Do you have disciples? How are you training them? Are you standing and teaching from the front of a classroom? Or do you take time to be with them like a father and them as a son so that they can imitate you? It's something to consider, leaders. Why don't you, if you're a stand and deliver sort of guy, why don't you take some time and begin to be with your, uh, your people and take some responsibility for them. I used to take my disciples up into the, the mountains and we would be by the stream and I would teach them how to hear the voice of the Lord. Uh, and I would uh, buy all their food while we're in these sort of excursions and trips as the example that was given in the scripture. Anyway, it's uh, you know, something to consider for a leadership. Uh, well, that's it for me for today. I pray that you have a fantastic day. Don't forget to subscribe uh, and keep up to date with all the good things. Get your heart ready for the return of the Lord. Well, uh, in the meantime, have a great day. I pray God's blessing on you and bye for now.